Hello everyone, it's the Dread Pirate once again, and uh, today we have the uh, surprise conclusion to Dark Core. Uh, I don't think uh, either I or Path to Science Fantasy are expecting this game to include this quickly, um, but it just kind of happened, um, and you'll you'll see why. <laughs> A couple short videos, uh, but basically, um, this so this is becoming kind of um, th this was essentially become like not really a one shot but a two shotter, I guess. Um, and it was a fun little game. I, I enjoyed it. It's nice to, uh, you know, I mean, it's nice for me to get out of the, um, the DMing chair and into the playing chair, although this situation is unique. Um, since I didn't do an intro for the first, uh, the first chapter, I'm gonna do one here and kind of, I'm gonna get, as before, I'm gonna do the, do the, the, the pretty historical background and I'm gonna do the, uh, do the, the, the game description, but basically, um, what we're gonna do right now is, like, show the premise of this. Uh, basically, uh, Path and I met on YouTube, uh, he likes my videos, and, and um, me, me and him started talking, and he basically has a lot of really crazy ideas for, uh, he especially likes combining science fiction and fantasy together, um, and he wants to run role-playing games, but he doesn't quite know how to do it, so he's asked for my assistance, so it's, I'm in this unusual situation where I'm like, I'm playing the game, but I'm also helping to run it, it's weird, but whatever, I'm, I'm that much of a whore, and I enjoy playing role-playing games enough that it's like, yeah, sure, why not? And I had some fun. Um, unfortunately, as a result, unfortunately, I'm a little harder on myself than I am on most people, I think. It's just like, it's if, if I'm playing the game, it's like, well, well, obviously my character needs to die. It's like, I, I, don't, I don't know why I do that to myself, but yeah, that's how it works out. Uh, so yeah, uh, on to the show. You'll never believe this, but in Antarctica, at the very... The, the, the tundra covered wasteland uh, on the underside of our planet there's this hidden land that um, is just completely cut off from the outside world in the middle of the most frozen place on our planet amidst it there is a tropical jungle that's been preserved since ancient times since millions of years ago millions of years ago an alien civilization known as the Nuwali came to our planet and um, they they set up a, a they set up this base or temple uh, somewhere on the ancient continent of Pangaea. And we don't know what happened to them. Long ago, they either sailed back to their own star system or died out or whatnot, but their ruins are still there. That location, that location wound up being, uh, like, still has their technology active. And their technology has kept that area warm and preserved just what the way it was many millions of years ago. And it's still there to this day. So in the middle of Antarctica, there is a valley, a vast valley full of tropical jun jungles, ancient dinosaurs, prehistoric creatures, and even human tribes. In addition, all manner of other bizarre creature and monster are there. Um, there's been some strange, strange, unusual tyrants that have risen up, like Garak the Sailor, who became the Sun God, the mighty Sauron, the mutant who can transform into a pterodactyl tyrant, even the mighty Magneto, searching for a homeland, for mutant kind, went down there and wanted it to be his own mutant paradise. The X-Men most notably know this location, the mighty Savage Land, and its guardian known as Kazar, and Shauna the She-Devil, and Sabor, the great saber-toothed tiger. But the other superheroes of the Marvel Universe have, have gone down there and had many adventures as well. But today, we're going to focus on one of its members. Uh, one of one inhabitant of, of the Savage Land, Tonga, the mighty hunt, hunter. Tonga is just a simple tribesman of the Fall People, uh, living living his life in the jungle, surviving uh, with his hunting skills and his ability to to sur survive off the land, along with the other tribesmen. Um, recently, on a on a tr on a hunt, he encountered something strange: a bizarre alien fox creature, clad in armor, uh, appeared out of nowhere and attacked him, seeking to hunt him. He managed to kill it and its guardians and brought the body back to his uh, his medicine man of his local village. But all of a suddenly, out of, the, out of the severed head of the fox creature, came this malevolent wraith. The creature became a terrible ghost and, and attacked him. Will he survive? How much longer does Tonga have? How much longer can he cheat death? This is Tonga's last hunt. Alright. Hello everyone, this is the Dread Pirate once again, and with me is Path of Science Fantasy... AKA Dark Fox, and we're gonna do some Dark Core again. And uh, when last we met, uh, Tonga of the Fall People, the caveman adventurer from the Savage Land, uh, had returned 
uh, to his village after killing a weird fox alien thing, and he showed it to the medicine man, and then its ghost showed up and tried to eat him. And, uh, and that's what happened. So, uh, like, uh, that's, that's where we left off last. Um, so, Pat the Science Fancy, how are you doing? Uh, good. Good, good, good. Alright, I, I almost forgot there's some more electronics in here I need to turn off, so. Okay. Alright. Um, uh, alright, so, big, big scary ghost has showed up. Um, what, should I, should I roll initiative, or? Uh, what, what, what do we need to do here? Roll initiative. Roll initiative, okay. And then I need to right. on this got the initiative. Okay, I have rolled um yeah. a eleven. And early. Okay. Uh, that that happen. Discard. Stuff, so yeah, yes. Some way that I like, know these things. All right, you are. Okay, this is the ghost alien fox thingy, and I will I open up that character sheet to double check. Uh, you have a. Well, it's not cold. Uh, so this creature has a plus zero. So you just roll straight d twenty. Okay. D d twenty right here. Yeah. Four. 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 Yeah, okay. straight up four. All right. Um, are you gonna have anybody else do anything, or is it just gonna be me and the and the fox ghost thing? Uh, oh, I need to run the initiative for. Uh, let's see, where are you there? The shaman. You want the shaman to go? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Yeah, I need to bring him up. For some reason, I accidentally uh, lost. We got two of these. I'm yeah. forgetting which one was which. Um, it's like jittery. All right, one of them is a uh, uh, plus one initiative, so it would be a d20 plus one. And what's this other one? 20 plus one. This other one appears to be a copy, so it's just like, yeah, so just, yeah, the, he has a plus one to his initiative. Uh, 15. 15, okay. All right. All right, the shaman goes first, so there's a big scary fox ghost roaring in my face, and it's like, oh, crap. And what's going to happen? Okay, let's see. It's got to go to his tails. Okay. Okay, let's see. I'm going to put my finger right here. It'll be easier to see when I see it. Okay, it's tails. Right. Um, you have inflict minor wounds, uh, create water, mending, detect poison, curse water, and magic stone. Um... And Flag Mountain Moon would still work on a ghost, wouldn't it? I don't think any of this would work on a ghost. Um, yeah, they're like, like the, the the better class for this would have been uh, clerics. Uh, I think there was a different shaman class I was showing you that might have worked. Like this is, I think this is the um, this shaman class comes from Encyclopedia uh, Arcane, uh, whereas the other shaman class comes from Oriental Adventures. Oriental Adventures is probably better for banishing spirits. Um, he has detect dimensional disturbances once per day, detect spirits once per day. Uh, he can see active spirits within 60 feet, which a world did. Yeah, let's see. Um, and he has, okay, he, he actually has, um, he, can, he has, he can do stuff to fire and water creatures. So he can actually turn or destroy fire creatures three times per day. And he can uh, rebuke uh, or command or bolster water creatures, which I think... As far as I can tell, this is just a non-specific undead. So, like that's that's the only problem. It's what you wanted. You, you wanted this version, so I built it for you. It's not. I don't uh, think. It, but it's not ideal for this situation. It's like I think the other, the Oriental Adventures Shaman would probably have been better. I should have like. Oh, I'll list to you. Some of it was cut out, and plus also I heard Shaman. I'm like, well, I'm gonna get that because this is my you know brain. I keep thinking D and D don't look like how I picked the shamans. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, um well, the idea, spirit, uh, the idea, the idea, uh, out of, when you said shaman, say it again, uh, when you said shaman, I was thinking about that one guy that's in, um, the, um, Ash versus the Evil Dead, you know, the one that's like the uncle or something to that one guy, um, yeah, um, um yeah, the Brujo, uh, pa pa Pablo's, Pablo's uncle, the Brujo, 
Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So I thought like the character was gonna have like they would have to make something then like you know exercise it or something. That is a good show. It's a good show, and it's a good character. Um, well, okay, yeah, like, the, the, the proper, like, the easiest build for getting rid of bad spirits in Dungeons & Dragons would be the cleric. Um, but, yeah, it, it's like, we, we, you want, you know, a shaman would make more cultural sense for the fall people. Um, and this, yeah, like, this works. The problem is this, it's like, again, the Oriental Adventures build is, like, has got specific stuff for, like, banishing spirits and stuff like that. Whereas the, this is a... I think this is a loosely more Native American based build, uh, but it's like it, it's from a different book altogether. Just it has the same. Well, also class. Picks too, it, yeah. yeah. So I, I guess I, I guess what it boils down to is like the, um, the 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 medicine man of the fall people can do certain things. He can't necessarily banish this spirit. So, but um, or not easily. Not easily. What do you want him to do? Um, I guess either hurt it or. Protect your guy from it. Okay, what's he gonna do? Uh, oh, oh, let's see. Click him out of room. He can punch it. Um, out of character. I know punching's a bad idea. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Well, I admit the shaman wouldn't do that anyway, yeah. so that would be like. You have right sword five feet. Right sword five feet uh, radius protection from evil. Um. Power invocation, right summon for spirit allies. Stone. What's magic stone? Uh, magic stone is he can basically take a stone and turn it into like a magic weapon. And let me take a look. Uh, let's go to the let's go to the trusty SRD because I don't know it off the top of my head. Um, or I could probably pull it up. I could probably pull it up in my player's handbook. But hold on. Um, look at the magic people. stone. 3.5 SRD. Okay, magic stone. Okay. Uh, you transmute as many as three pebbles, which can be no larger than a sling bullet, so they can strike with great force when thrown or slung. Uh, if hurled, they are, uh, have a range of increment of 20 feet. If slung, treat them as a sling bullet, range 50 feet. Uh, the spell gives them a plus one enhancement on uh, attack and damage rolls. The user of the stones makes a normal range attack. Each stone that hits deals one die six plus one damage. Uh, uh, points of uh, points of damage, including the spell's enhancement bonus, uh, or two die six plus two uh, points against undead. Okay, so that actually would work, but he would have to cat. He would have to gather up three stones, three pebble-sized stones, and then cast the spell. And we're in a we're in a caveman village, so I mean, there's probably a, a lot of rocks. Yeah, so I guess that would be like a surge. Um, it, it's up to you. I mean, you're the d dungeon master. You can have him. Like, if he needs to do a search check, you can have him do that. If, um, if not, you know, it's like you can just have him find him. It's up. It's up to you. Okay, I didn't know there was like rules to where like you can't do that without actually. The, there are, yeah. there are, but you're the boss right now. That's the thing. So it's like it's like depends yeah. on how, you know, easy or difficult guess, you want it to make. Um, I guess I would say that maybe he. Um, I'd go as far as to say that he had some rocks with him, and then cast magic stone on them. Okay, so he takes out his stones and he casts magic, magic, uh, magic stone on them. All right, so that's what he does. Um, my turn. Uh, okay, what was my weapon? I had an axe, if I recall. Um, all right, so um, like uh, I, I, I know out of character that I can't hurt this thing, but um, he like um, uh, like like. In character, I don't know. I can't hurt this thing. So let me double check. I'm, I, I I raged once earlier. I want to see if I can rage I I anymore. I've, I can only rage once per day. I can't rage anymore. Um, so uh, I just draw my axe and I swing at it. And I have a plus six. Uh, it'd be a 14. Um, um, I hit its AC and I my axe passes right through it and fling. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a um, intelligence check to figure out that I can't hurt this thing. Um, what what would the DC be for? What 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 should I roll in order to know that this thing's dang that I can't I can't hurt this thing? In my call, or do I got to look up something? You, you, you it's your call. Um, one I typically said is 15, but 15 is a little high. But I mean, I you know, it's up to you. It's like, like yeah, 15 15 is a decent like eight like. DC for a lot of things. 
say maybe a 12. 12, okay. Eight. Um, I'm stupid. I don't know any better. <laughs> I'm going to keep swinging. <laughs> uh, it's Ghost Fox Alien, sir. What's Ghost Fox Alien going to do? Okay. Right about oh, down up there. Uh, low light vision, bioluminescence, uh, bites. Oh, He's got a bite attack. Uh, it's carry on soul. I heard before saying this is okay. This is good spot. So yeah, I'm on the right one. There are spells here somewhere. I guess I have to like literally take my time and let's see here. Um okay it's got a bite attack. Uh it's got draining touch. Uh it's got frightful oh, moan. Yeah. It's got malevolence. Um rejuvenation means it's hard to kill it. It's got a turn resistance. This means it's hard to kill it. Sorcerer spells, it's got dancing lights, touch of fatigue, prestidigitation, detect poison, seeker, uh, mud ball, um, uh, predict weather, cold blast, um, and uh, summon uh, yeah, uh, summon monster one or creature one. Forget where I got that one. That was, I got that from an Arcana Unearthed, but yeah. And it's also got aid plants. Um, what's malevolence? Uh, malevolence basically means it can, can possess something. Um, it's let me let me double check it. But um, once per rounds, it can merge its body with a creature on the material plane. Ability is similar to magic jar spell, cast level tenth, or uh, its hit dice, whichever is higher. That it does not require a, a receptacle. It uses this ability must be manifested, and, and it can must try to move in the target space. Moving in the target space to use the malevolence ability does not provoke an attack of opportunity. Target can resist the attack with a successful will save DC 15 plus its charisma modifier, which is a 17. A uh, creature that successfully saves is immune to its malevolence for 24 hours. The ghost cannot enter the target space. If the save fails, it vanishes into the target's body. It, bas it Malevolence basically means it can possess you. So it's like, yeah. So it's it can, it can, it can it jump into my body, it could jump into the shaman's body, it could jump to somebody nearby's body. That's It, it could do all those. Pretty much does that one thing does. Yeah. And, well, yeah. Evil Dead. I can't help them make Evil Dead reference every time I'm involved in Necromancy. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so that's going to be a thing. So if I play a campaign in it, I'm in Necromancy, you better tell everybody else to get ready for all the Evil Dead reference over and over. Well, I got stats for the for the Deadites. You can use them. <laughs> I know, but I'm just saying, fun. I thought I have it doing that. I love that yeah. movie. Yeah, Evil Dead's good. Evil Dead's good. All right, what are you going to have him do? I need to do I step out just give me a hard time for like literally act like I'm a wizard and apparently when I cast a certain spell through my staff I always gotta say this is my boomstick and he's like what's that from like, <laughs> that's cute evil dead that's cute that's not bad then my friend me and him used to like literally try to come up with the best evil dead reference we could and how best we could like do that one where he does where he says you know uh this is where like right before he said this is my boomstick he says like shop smart or something Shop smart, shop uh, S smart. Yeah. <laughs> darkness, cause, oh my god, we watched that movie so many times that I'm pretty sure that thing's like literally burnt, like melted plastic or whatever it's made out of the CD. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, right. Ar 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 the Evil Dead series is really good. Yeah, yeah. what do you have to do though? Uh, almost a touch of in um, touch of what. Nope. Uh, um, touch of enfeeblement. I can't pronounce that word. Touch of enfeeblement. Is that one of his spells? Yeah. So I heard you just say it earlier. Um, it's you got touch of fatigue. A touch of fatigue. Okay, I thought yeah. you said uh, enfeeblement. I something. think that's another spell, but I don't think this one has it. Touch of fatigue is one ones he got. Um, okay. Let me double check. I know you all said touch of brain, but I ain't gonna do that one yet. Okay. All right. Touch of ooh, 
I'm gonna be like, oh, well, second time in Dark Call, you can't get your character killed. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, okay, so he's doing it to me, though? Yeah. Okay. Uh, touch of fatigue. Alright, um... Yeah, I'd spell resistance qualify. It's a fortitude save. Uh, it, you channel negative energy through your touch, uh, fatiguing the, the target. You must succeed a touch attack to strike a target. Uh, the subject is immediately fatigued for the spell's duration. Uh, the spell has no uh, effect on a creature that is already fatigued. Unlike with normal fatigue, the effect ends as soon as the spell's duration expires. Um, okay, so... One round per level. So this thing should be... So it should be three rounds. Um, okay. Uh... So it needs to um the touch attack, so it's gonna have a plus one, so you'd roll a D twenty. Okay. And you have to hit my AC, which is Twelve. A fifteen. Twelve? Uh nope. Uh I, I, my AC is a fifteen, so so it reaches out and tries to touch me and Tonga jumps out of the way. It's back to the shaman's turn. What's the shaman gonna do? I'll stack it. Sure. Stop the recording while we're waiting. And we're back. Okay, uh, it's the shaman's turn. What is the shaman going to do? Um, hey, take the magic stones. Okay. And uh, how far it... Well, wait a minute. No, that's my call, isn't it? How far he is to the ghost, ain't it? Yeah, I always envisioned that like he was not too far away. He was like 10 feet away from it, and it was like right in my face. I guess he'd have to throw it by hand, but I'm thinking maybe he'd just throw it and then hit the ghost wizard. Yeah. Um, you have a plus six to hit with those. Uh, so you'd roll a d20 plus six, uh, and the ghost, you need to hit a 12, 12 or higher. The plus six ain't it. Right. Right. Okay, let's see. No, let's... One. Natural one? 21. 21. Okay. That does hit. Now, the problem is um, the ghost is incorporeal. So now um, you need to roll a percentile dice and you need to get into the high 50s. So do you have a D100 by any chance? Or if you want, I could do it. Um, you want me to do the percentile? Yeah, because I don't got no D100. Okay. Uh, 20. 20 is the low percentile. So since it's below 50%. Uh, the rock flies through the ghost and does nothing. And it's Tonga's turn again. Tonga's going to swing. Uh, swing his mighty axe. Um, Thirteen. That hits. Uh, but of course it just cuts right through the ghost and does nothing. I'm going to do another intelligence check to realize I can't hurt this thing. Uh, Sixteen. I it, it, it dawns on me... That it's a ghost, it's a spirit, and us, it's immune. I can't hurt it with my axe. So now I realize it's... it's I, I can't hurt it. Um, okay, it is the ghost fox alien's turn. Um... Uh, it goes to, um... goes back towards you, but instead it casts on you, um... See, where is it? Um, I'm gonna... I guess this touch will touch up in female again. Touch of fatigue? Okay. Um, this is fatigue, I can't... Yeah, plus one. Okay. Twelve plus one. I mean, D twenty and then D plus one. D twenty plus one. Yes. Six. Uh, it's not hit. So, I you know it, it tries to touch me and it misses. 
Um, shaman, what is the shaman gonna do? Um, shaman's got two more stones. Okay, let's see, where's this spell? Okay, right here they are. Um... I don't really know, but so maybe well, I'm kind of out of wounds, but then uh, cast is uh, inflict minor wounds on it. Okay, um, inflict minor wounds is deals um, one point of damage, uh, but it's an undead, so it actually heals it. So uh, this this ghost creature has gained one temporary hit point. It is now at thirteen health. So he, he casts he casts inflict miter wounds on it and it's and it's just it's it seems invigorated. Um, Tonga realizes okay I need to get this thing out of the village. So uh, Tonga basically is going to um, back five feet away and say come and get me come and get me you stupid ghost come and get me and then I run. Um, the ghost can make an attack of opportunity against me if it wishes because I'm going to go my full movement speed away from it. And I'm actually going to be double moving too. So I'm going to be doing... Uh, how fast do I move? I'm going to be running 80 feet away from it. And out of the tent and into the village. And I'm going to try to get it to the front of the village. And try to get it to chase me. So if you, if you want, you can have it make an attack of opportunity. It just follows you. Like it chases you and stuff. Okay, but it, it doesn't attack me though? No. Uh, okay. Alright, so um, I run. It chases me. Uh, how fast does the ghost move? Um, well, its normal speed is 30 feet, but it can fly. It swim speed is 30 feet. Um, its fly feet is 60 feet. If you want it, 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 yeah, if you want it, can double move and it'll it'll catch up to me. Uh, but it can't attack because basically, you're if you double move, you it's like you're kind of running all out. Um, but it means that you um, you it it doubles your speed. So you, it, it can go 120 feet, but it wouldn't—it wouldn't be able to attack me. That's the only problem. But it can—it it can like be right. It can be right on my tail if it, if it wants. Uh, yeah, it just got on your tail. Okay. All right. Um, I just keep running, and I'm gonna run out of the village, and like out of the way, out of the way, monster, 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 and I'm making as much noise as I possibly can, and. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to run for the, uh, the the village, the front of the village, and out into the jungle, and I'm going to try to lure this thing away uh, as far away as I can. Uh, what happens? Um, it um, keeps uh, chasing me. Okay, it keeps chasing me. Um, All right. the... Um... All right, go ahead. I would also say the shaman was also following you as well. Um. Okay, hold on. Uh, the shaman. Uh, how fast does he move? He moves. If I didn't write it down, he moves at thirty feet, so he could go at sixty feet max. So, uh, he would be. Um, all right, yeah, okay. I, I go eighty feet. Um, the ghost goes, the ghost goes as fast as I go. Um, so he would be trailing behind me twenty feet each time. So eventually, if I'm running all out, he's gonna eventually. Even if he's running all out, he's I'm gonna lose him because there's he, he can, his max speed is sixty feet basically. Okay. So do, um, I'm, I'm assuming I'm assuming I lose the shaman. I'm assuming I lose the shaman because basically he's not gonna. Yeah, there's gonna be like it's gonna be a cumulative twenty feet that he just can't maintain. Um. All right. So I'm into the jungle. I'm, I'm running through the jungle, and I realize, well, how can I get rid of this creature? It's right on my tail. The only thing I can think to do is go to the Nuwali ruins. Go to the um. Or uh, okay, I've got I've got two options. Um, the Nuwali ruins or. Magneto's old fortress is what I can think to do. Um, like maybe there's, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna run balls out to Magneto's fortress, 
and see if I can find some something some kind of weapon there that I can use to hurt it. And so I'm, I'm just running through the jungle, trying to avoid, trying to like get away from this thing. Ed and the shaman's following you. Okay, he he he, he he's. He's eventually going to lose sight of me and probably doesn't know where I'm going. Okay. Do I, uh, I guess it's just chasing me nonstop. Do I eventually get to Magneto's fortress? Yeah, and uh, when you're there, you notice some, it looks like somebody's in there. Like, I can't remember how it's supposed to look. I don't know if you can tell exactly, but I guess, are there windows in there? Like is there windows in Magneto's fortress? I think so. I'm I'm remembering from the X Men cartoon. I think there's yeah. They're it's, it's like high up. You know, it's, it's like a climb. So it's like, but I think there are windows in there. Yeah. Okay, cause there's somebody in there. Okay. Um, can I make out who's up? Who's in there? Um. Um. Uh, what kind of role would you have to do? Um, for me, it'll be a spot check. Uh, I guess do a spot check. Okay. If I have spot, I think I have spot. Yeah. Um. I don't have spot as a skill, but it would be. A, I would say it would be a perception check. Uh, plus one. Um. All right, I rolled a sixteen. Um. All you notice is the guy's got a hood on. The guy's got a hood on. Okay. Um. I start trying to wave up to him. Monster, monster, help, help! And I'm running. I'm gonna try to get into the get into the into the castle. Do I get into it? Yeah. I get inside. The thing's following me. I'm running around looking for like what looks like an like a weapon. Um, I've probably seen stuff like laser guns and more like advanced weaponry uh, from like the time that the X Men were here, or like I, I know of it. I just I would think it's magic because. I'm I'm a primitive person who doesn't know any better, so um, so I'm gonna look around and try to find a weapon <laughs> that can hurt it. Okay. Um, eventually you hear somebody coming towards you. Okay, is that the cloaked guy? Yeah, and you notice that um, he got something that sounds like a stick, like you can hear like a you know like the the deal where someone's got a cane and they're kind of clapping on the ground. Okay. Then, um, um, right before you see him, he kind of hides in the shadow a little bit, and, uh, you see him a little bit, but he talks to you, and he says, um, give me a second, I'm not done this in a while, I have this kind of voice. Okay. Well, um, I see that you have been chased by a ghost who shall you be i am tonga help help me help me get rid of it run to safety where can i find a weapon i am all you need i'm still running balls out looking for a weapon because it's like right on my tail so it's like okay uh I want to see if I can remember what the dude was this thing. I'm not actually not have to ask you a question. Okay. Um, let's see. Where is it? Uh, what do I need a, a roll for a command undead? Uh, Command Undead, that's a good question. Um, I had to look this up uh, a couple weeks ago, actually. Um, rebuke. Turn or Rebuke Undead. 3.5. Uh, let's see. Whoa. Um, turning checks. Turning damage effect roll. Dress rowing. Evil clerics. Command. A commanded undead creature is under the mental control of the evil cleric. The cleric must make a standard action to give mental orders to a commanded uh, undead. Uh, any 
one time the cleric may command any number of undead whose total hit dice do not exceed his uh, his level. He may voluntarily relinquish uh, command or it, uh, of, on any commanded undead creature or the creatures in order to command new ones. So he can just do it so long as he is of he is he has three hit dice or higher. So as long as he's like level three or higher than that, he can do it. He can command this thing. Uh, get down and hit the Rona and do a... No, he just does it. You just, you just do it. Um, the, the ghost alien is... Let me double check on the ghost alien. Uh, oh, okay, no, no. He's got to be level seven, He's got to be level six or higher, because the ghost alien... Well, wait. No, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, wait a minute. This guy's got templates. Yeah, hold on. No, he's just got to be level one or higher, I think, because this thing's actually... Um, yeah, because you... Um, he... he um, this creature is actually has a higher level adjustment. He has like a plus um, five level adjustment, so it's actually only a, a, a one hit die ghost. So he, as long as he is, um, he has the ability to command undead, and he's level one or higher, he can actually command it just automatically. Okay. So the guy sticks his hand out, and notice the hand is kind of a. Real darkest bluest skin with like long black sharp nails. Okay. And he waves it, and the creature kind of just pretty much stops in his track and just don't do nothing. Okay. So he stops it. All right, he yeah. stops it. All right. Um, I see. He stopped it. I turn. Do I? Is, are there any weapons nearby that I could grab and like blast the ghost with? Um. I don't even know what he would have in his thing. Magneto. I don't know if Magneto's actually defended for ghost attacks. Probably not, but I'm 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 thinking like what what I'm I'm looking for. The, the, what I'm looking for is, is is like laser guns and stuff like that, or something like like whatever whatever looks like a weapon that looks like it's magical or at least advanced technology uh, is what Tonga would grab because Tonga would assume it's all magic anyway. Um. So, would there be anything like that in there, or like... I don't know, I was gonna say he's gonna hand you one, but I don't really got no stats for a magical weapon. I wouldn't know how to make one real fast. Okay. Or, or do you want to have him do something else? Because he's he stopped him, so it's like, if you want him to like... Like, uh, uh, oh, it, okay, I, I'm, I'm searching. I'll do a search check to like, see if I can find, like, a weapon that I'd be looking for. Because that's, that's what he's gonna do on his turn. Because he now, like, he does, because I don't know what's happening. All I, I know is that you managed to stop the creature. But I don't know that you're, I don't know, I don't know exactly what he did. Because I'm just, I'm just a barbarian. That's all I, I do. I got a 20, uh, non-natural. So, do I find anything of interest or? Um, yeah, but all you find is, like, just a few, like, laser gun and ray guns. Okay, I'm going to pick up a laser gun. Okay. And, um, Okay. Um, maybe I got a paper off there just make quick stats for it. I don't I, even know I, how I, to. I've got, I got books. I've got books. Um, <laughs> so we can do that. Um, what I'm trying to do on Google, trying to find something that would give me like ways, at least something that could help me make stats and stuff. Well, look, okay, there, there's stuff available. So it's like I could either use the Dungeon Master's guy, which has um, like it, like future has like lasers for futuristic weapons in there, or we could use Future D20, which is like that's Future D20's thing. Is it's got um it's got stats for like laser weapons in it. Uh, Future D twenty is probably yeah. the better choice, honestly. Um, Talking about like you know, sometime I I'm not bothering you, you know while we're not playing the stuff around here, I'm not trying to make stuff. That's what I've been trying to do. Okay. Let's see. Uh, we want gear. And um, okay, so let me let me let me see what my options are. Um. Those are projectile weapons. Um, let's see, they they do it by like player levels, like like what how advanced your civilization is. Okay, we there's a laser pistol, a laser rifle, a laser sniper rifle. Um, let's see, uh, then there's. Um, Let's see, uh, a concussion uh, rifle, a gravity snare, a plasma pistol, a plasma rifle, uh, a rail gun, um, let's see, um, a 
cryonic rifle, a disintegrator, a lightning gun, and a pulse rifle, and a sonic beam. Uh, those are the options from the Future D20 books. Uh, so, like, do, we could use one of those. Which, which, which one do I find? Um, I don't know if I didn't yet. You didn't hear me? Yeah, did you say a fusion rifle? Uh, yes. Yeah, I guess, yeah, that one, I guess. Okay, hold on, hold on. Well, let me, let me, let me double check. Um... Let's see. Um, well, I don't know if I said fusion rifle. I, okay, it, it, there's there's a pulse rifle, there's a lightning gun, there's a disintegrator, there's a cryonic rifle. Um, what else? There's a concussion rifle, a gravity snare, a plasma pistol, and a plasma rifle. And I think after that, it's um, a laser sniper rifle, a laser rifle, and a laser pistol. Um, so those are our choices. A pulse rifle? Pulse rifle? Okay. Let me double check the pulse uh -huh. rifle. It's important I look this up because it's not it's not magical. And I know it's not magical, so I gotta be fair here. Um Okay, it deals three die ten damage, uh fire, uh eighty feet, and it's a box fifty magazine. Let me just double check the entry real quick. Uh pulse rifle is fully automatic laser uh uh Assault rifle capable of firing a rapid barrage of laser rounds. The pulse rifle is the standard issue given uh, to most heavy assault soldiers in the energy age. Um, pulse rifles do not use animation, but instead powered by a power pack. It's got about 50 shots in it. Um, okay. Um, so, I pick that up, and I'm going to point it at it, and I'm going to shoot it. Um, and uh, I'm gonna, I have a penalty because I don't know how to use it, because I'm, I'm a caveman. So I have like a minus four penalty for using it un untrained. Um, so I have a plus one, where I normally have a plus five. Okay, I crit, so I should hit it. So the question is, um, here's the thing though, this this shoots energy and it shoots fire, um, but it's non-magical. So it's like, um, I think, okay, it, all right. I want to say ghosts aren't immune to energy damage, but they have 50% to ignore damage from all from all corporeal sources. So I'm going to do a, um, uh, uh, uh I'm going to do a, do a percentile roll again. 44. Okay, the laser should have just gone through it and done nothing. But it's like, it does fire damage, so it might actually be able to hurt it, because it's not really, like, um, non-magical weapons, like, like, um, like swords and sticks and things and punching, wouldn't do anything else that has a magical enhancement bonus. Um... So, but since this deals energy damage instead of deals fire, it might have a better chance of hitting it. So, but anyway, I shoot a laser through it. It doesn't do anything. Um, is um, the, the ghost aliens completely under this mysterious stranger's control? Uh, what is he going to do? Um. Um. Hmm. Else here, okay. And then, um, um, uh, eighty foot range box fifty magazine, okay. Controls the thing and gets it to like leave. Okay, so you just like, tell. Least, okay, so can... he, 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 he tells it to leave. <laughs> His hand makes that kind of like that motion, like you know when you kind of like do something when you're like trying to like be like ooh scram, right? That little thing motion. Okay. Okay, so he tell he tells the ghost to scram. Yeah. Okay. All right. So if he tells it to scram, it's just gonna leave. Does he? Does he? Like like does it leave? How how far does he tell it to leave? Does he does it leave the area completely, or is it just go outside? It kind of like goes outside, and like from if you look out like a window or something, if there's a window to look out, it kind of goes towards like an area where it's not. 
you know, most people and stuff. Okay. Woods, like, about the worst thing it can probably harm is a scroll or whatever it's in. So it basically just goes off, it goes off into the jungle and just stays in there somewhere. Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, so he tells the scram, it's like, like, how did you do that? Or, or, are you, are you a, are you a, are you a powerful medicine man? I, um, I'm a, um, very much skilled in the magic, and when he says that, he walks out of the shadows, and you notice that his body's all blue, he's very muscular, he's got kind of like a barbarian kind of look. Mm -hmm. And he's got, like, you know, kind of a barbarian lung cloth and stuff. Mm -hmm. And a hood. And you notice he got a skull for a face. And every bit of that skull is pure yellow. Yeah. My God, your face. Are you... Are you one of the mutates? Um, no, I'm, um... From somewhere... Away... Some wall known as Eternia. Eternia. Oh, this must be one of those far-off lands, like where uh, where Kazar originally came from, or the X Men. Um, uh, more as they planned it. Okay, you are speaking over his head. He doesn't really. <laughs> so, uh, it's like he just he just kind of looks at you in awe. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, Tonga Tonga doesn't really know about how planets in space work, but he'll he'll roll with it. Um, okay. Well, well, thank you, thank you. You you've saved me and perhaps my village. This creature um, came from some kind of some kind of magical hole. It was it was alive, and I, I killed it. But then it became a terrible ghost and attacked me at my village. Um. Well. Those things just... Yes? Uh, Dark, Dark Wolf, you there? Hello? I thought you... Yeah, you... I thought you were going to continue with the role-playing, like, you know, I thought you were going to take them back. Well, you, 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 you said those things just, and I didn't hear anything after that. Yeah. Um, okay. So, like, what well, did? Yeah. What? What? What's? Let, let, I'm, yeah. He. I didn't interrupt him. So, I mean, he may finish his thought. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I, well, I thought you were gonna come. No, that's cool. It's cool. Like, you know, so, um, um, around here, um, barbarian. Um, like. I am I am a hunter. I am Tonga of the Fall People. So they say. You've you've heard of me? Um just now. Okay. Well, um I guess I'm very grateful to you for um for saving me in my village. You there, dude? Yeah. And then he kind of like uh, just like you know, uh, notion you to like you know, kind of show you around to like your place and stuff. He wants me to take him back to the village. Hello. Yeah. He wants. Yeah. Me, he, he said he wants me to take him back to the village. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. I suppose. Um, let me prepare them. Um, your, no offense, your appearance might be a little scary to them, but um, we've we've encountered many many unusual creatures. Uh, the mutates are, are much known to us, and there are other there are other creatures that walk this land. So just let me prepare them first before you enter. Never mind. I don't know if I can do that in D and D. Do what in D and D? I oh, know the skeleton I'm using is from the 
and he's known to like I don't know how he does because I'm showing the show, but apparently he's known to, um, he's known to like put on like a mask. And it's like there was like a skull there, but it's like it's it's good enough to to make somebody believe that they clearly, you know, from people from back then, you know, how kids wouldn't notice it because you know it's like so obvious to him because it's like oh he's got a mask on, but like you can tell it's skeletal because every well, bit of putting them. on a mask is easy. You can just put on a mask. So it's like like you can tell that it looks like it looks like he's literally using like almost like a really good like real high dollar Halloween mask. That's pretty much. But it looks it, like is, is it good enough to fool someone? Like, does it look like a human, like human skin? Does it look like like a, a person, or is it? Does it? Yeah, does but it, the only thing that's like a telltale sign is like, well, for one thing, when he smiles, you can see the yellow teeth. Let alone, there's like, you know, their eye socket is just no eyes. Oh, they probably still look terrifying. Okay, well, whatever. It's a mask. It'll look like, like I'm not a scowl. You know, it, that might. Yeah, that might help. Um, I mean, does he does he put on a mask while I'm there, or does he just does he just like yeah, like yeah, like just take me to your village? And it's like okay. I mean, I guess he puts on a mask. Okay, so he, he puts on a he puts on a weird mask, and it's like all right, okay, and I take him back to my village. Explain my god. I don't know he's evil. I don't know he's evil. He saved me from a ghost. That makes him good in my book. Yeah. That's uh, like, so I, this is a Skeletor, so be prepared for yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah, plus, um, the eighty Skeletor is uh, kind of a douche. That's true. Um, all yeah, right. He's so, like in the comments. That's why he's called you that barbarian. Okay. That's all he does. Okay. The eighty cartoons was known for like the cheesiest of it because it's eighties. That's it's true. The cheesiest. Part. That's true. Like everything that's a joke. But he saved the children that one time. For Christmas. Yeah. Alright, so yeah, I, 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 I I take him to um I take him back to the uh to, to through the jungle back to my village. And um I I look at the guards and I wave I wave them down. Um I I took them all the way to the one known as Magneto's castle, and I found this man here, and he he drove away the spirit. Um so be prepared, he's a little strange. He might be, uh, he says he's from another land. He might be a different creature. Um, maybe a mutate, but he, he claims he's not one of the mu one of the mutants. Then uh, I tell that to the guards, and wh what do they do? Uh, they say okay. Okay, we, we, we go inside the village. Uh, this is my village. We are the fall people. Um, well, um, this place, I have just apparently arrived here. Oh, okay, you, you arrived by one of those, those flying, those flying pteranodons that, 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 that go overhead? Many travelers come down here with those things. They're made uh, entirely no. of metal. Uh, apparently my, uh, oh, messed up. Who messed up? I dimensional portal. Ah, you come from another realm. You you opened a a, a, a portal, a hole. The fox creatures yeah. arrived in a portal. Do you know anything about the fox creatures? Um, not sure. Okay. Well, again, thank you. Um, is there anything I can do for you? Would you like something to eat? Um, nah. Okay. Well, I have had a hard day. I'm going to go rest. Okay. Perhaps we could find... Well, let me let me stay with you. Let me see, let me introduce you to uh, our leader. And uh, maybe I could find a place for you to stay. Um, okay. So, this is up to you. But I believe there's backstory on the fall people that is of note. Um, cause I, I'm just, a, I mean, like, as far as we know, there's a bunch of different tribes with a bunch of different chieftains, but I believe their head chieftain is known as Nareel, um, who is, um, a cave woman who shacked up with, um, Colossus and actually had a kid with him named Peter, who Colossus or none of the X-Men know about. Um, and, um, she's, 
Um, she leads the fall people and the other races in the United Tribes, a coalition of races to oppose Zaladane and other tyrants. So, I mean, uh, if you want, we could just have some kind of random dude who's who's a chieftain, or if you want, it could be Nareel herself. Who, who do you who do you want the chief to be? Uh, Nareel. Okay. All right. So we're actually in Nareel's uh, Nareel's village. So I I go. I go to the biggest tent where Nareel stays at, and I, I, I talk to the guards, and it's like, uh, uh, it is, it is, uh, it is I, Tonga. Um, this, this man helped me, helped ward off an evil spirit and saved my life. And, uh, I, we, um, he has just arrived from some other realm. Uh, do we have a tent? I, I, I was wondering if, Nar if, uh, Nareel can provide a tent or a place for him to stay. Uh, yes. Okay. All right. Does, is that what the guard says, or did the did Nareel say that? Uh, Nareel said that. Nareel said that. Okay. All right. So Nareel comes out and 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 says like, "All right. Um. Okay. Well. Um. Do you do you want me to do anything else, or did you will you will you take it uh take it from here, Chieftain? Uh, yes. Yes, you want me to help, or yes, you will take it from here. Uh, yes, I'll take it from here. Sorry. Okay. Awesome. I am going to go rest. I've had a very difficult hunt. Um, I'm going to see if I can find some food um, from, like, that maybe... Because my hunt was exciting, but I didn't actually get anything I could eat. So um, I'm going to go see if there's, like, if someone else is, like... It maybe has... Maybe maybe not meat, but basically, like, some just kind of, like, um, some fruit or something that people gathered and, like, I, you know... Like so, something that the group or the communities, you know, producing or something like that. Do I get food? Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll say I get some fruit. I get some fruit. I eat, and I go back to my tent and I take a nap. I guess it goes to the next day, don't it? Yes. Okay. Well, the next day I'll wake up and um, there's um, there's a commotion, some bit far away from your village, and you know you hear a lot of zzz, like like electricity sounds. Okay. Uh, I get up and I gather my equipment. Um. Oh, hold on. Um. All right. It was a night's sleep. I'm level three, so I I should be at twenty eight health now. Uh, and I can rage again, so that's good. Um, so, um, I, I get up, I grab my, my axe and my, my newfound pulse gun, and, uh, I go and I investigate. Okay, I notice Skeletor, it's like, like, Skeletor, do you know what's going on? Uh, I do not know, but there is a disturbance over there. All right, Sounds like motion. All right, all right. Um, where is, is it outside the village taking place, or, or what? Yeah, it sounds like maybe somebody's fighting because there's like sounds of kicks mixed with a few like loud zapping sounds. Zapping sounds. Okay, zapping sounds. let's go check it out. So I, I run to uh, I, I go to investigate. And what do I see? It's outside the village, so it's I guess some ways into the jungle. Um, oh. I don't know if you're guys familiar with this guy, but um, you see a uh, devil and shocker fighting. Um. Okay, I am completely unfamiliar with these characters. <laughs> so it's like, so I see a man in a red suit with um with like a nightstick, with with like a, a bunch of like with billy clubs with little red sticks, um, and a dude wearing um, a yellow and reddish quilt and is shooting off. Blasts of, uh, of like, of sonic energy at each other. So, um, okay, um, well, are, do they look like they're gonna threaten the village? Um, uh, you can't really tell, but the shocker guy is like literally blowing up a lot of the stuff, and he looks like he could be careless. How far away is he from the village? Um, that's enough to at least probably more be a commotion, but it looks like it could drag on towards the villas. The village. 
Like, he could accidentally hit the village and blow things up? Yeah, like, like he could, like, like, get to where it can lead there and then cause things. Okay. Um, alright. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a hide check. Uh, and... do something here. Alright. I have a plus two. Uh, 21. I'm gonna hide in the brush. Okay. And am I successfully hidden? I rolled a 21. Yes. Okay, I'm hiding in the brush, and I'm going to ready... Um, I think I'm going to ready my bow and arrow. Um, is Skeletor or the other two characters going to do anything else? Uh, Skeletor going to do something. Um, what would you um, roll for, like, a convince check? Like, to get... Because Skeletor going to calm them two down. Um, okay, oh, uh, that would be diplomacy. So, um, if you have diplomacy, you can use it as a skill. And so whatever the bonus there, you're going to add to the roll. Uh, if not, it would be your charisma modifier. So. I don't know if this I've got diplomacy. I mean, are you using your character sheet from, uh, from my, my game? Yeah, the are, are you using my character sheet? Are you using the character sheet from my game? Yeah, is that Okay. It's your game. I mean, you're like 15 level... You're like 12 levels higher than everybody else. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm going to have him to stand by and probably more likely just, you know, kind of be on the sidelines. Okay. I was like, people that's like way lower than him, he'd pretty much own them. Okay, that, that's true. That that's he true, he would. Uh, so... <laughs> Um, all right. Just, just a flick. Okay, so if, if you, you if you have diplomacy, you would use the the you would add the number that's there. I'm not looking at Skeletor's sheet, so I don't know what's there. Um, if you if you're not doing that, you would be using um, your whatever your charisma modifier is. So um, and it's it's whatever. So next to charisma, it's whatever the the number is there. Yeah, I don't think you got diplomacy. It's a charisma. Okay. Let's see yeah. Here. Okay, yeah, and, 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 and all the game stuff is off my computer right now, so I can't even look up Skeletor. Yeah, um, let me see. Shh. I think Charisma. Oh, I... While you're doing that, I'm going to stop the recording real quick.